Well, what did you think about his quite willing acceptance of the responsibility of controlling the quality of what goes over the network? Well, I, I'll comment from my own experience. Uh, so, um, and I know this is being recorded, so I'll probably regret saying all this, but, um, but the thing is, I think that the one thing I did take away from his presentation is, um, which I think he was trying to convey, is the complexity of all of this and their inability to be able to really uh, wrestle with the fundamentals. So we've had, uh, we're right now grappling with an issue with Apple, but we've had a major issue with, uh, with YouTube and then with Facebook. Um, all around uh, transparency. So one of the issues that's in your report. So the, the YouTube issue uh, was um, coming after the election, uh, their desire to label news content by source, and we were labeled as state TV. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that information? From Wikipedia. And so they, um, it took us, I think, close to nine months to get them to change that designation, that we are not the same as RT, we are not, we are not the voice of the government, that um, we are public television, which is fundamentally different. And the, 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 you know, I'm very proud of the trust that people place in us. It's, it's probably our most important uh, attribute. And so to undermine that with information that is incorrect, blunt instrument solution. The second issue I had with Facebook, Facebook began labeling our content as political ads. So material that Rainey Aronson from, from Frontline, who was on the night uh, report. So I think that um, part of, and that took many, many months to, to fix as well. So for me, it was a reminder of the fact that this, you know, these are complex issues. They're looking for very sweeping changes that hopefully can, can at least chip away at some of the issues of trust that they're wrestling with but they're not sitting down with any of the people who actually could help them you know, craft solutions. Sit down with pointers, sit down with organizations, sit, sit down with Columbia Journalism Report, and, 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 make those, um, and, and make good decisions that are actually going to help the public discern the accuracy of the information that they're reading or can, seeing. Can I, can I say just one thing on the separation of fact and opinion? It's so important to empower the institutions that Paul is talking about to uh, make the distinction. But as this panel is designed to address, these institutions are under siege, and people don't trust anyone to be neutral arbiters, as Walter Cronkite was. The Constitution Center's solution is to convene liberal and conservative voices to write about constitutional issues on all platforms. And that is another way of ensuring balance while exploring areas of agreement and disagreement. So we have an interactive constitution online that has convened the top liberal and conservative scholars nominated by the leading liberal and conservative lawyers organizations to write about every clause of the constitution, describing what they agree about and what they disagree about. And it's very inspiring to see how much agreement there is, but also disagreement. Okay, we have a podcast, and I'm not, I'm not making, I'll, I'll plug the podcast, but the, the point isn't to plug the Constitution Center, it's to give you another model, rather than presuming that we're ever going to really separate fact from opinion, recognize that at least on constitutional issues, and I think on many, there are good arguments on both sides, and just convening liberals and conservatives together to debate and discuss them is good.